What kind of advice would you give to someone if they said, Allison, I have been out there. I'm online. I'm on this app. I'm on that app. I'm on Facebook. And I've been, you know, going to the movies and I go out with my friends. And so what type of advice would you give them? Mm -hmm. So you just said a mouthful that's so good. But make sure that you're opening up so that I look approachable. Am I smiling or am I on the phone? Do I have a nasty attitude? Like be mindful of your facial expressions and your body language so that that man knows Okay, she's giving me the eye. I feel Hello, like and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationships from, from surviving, surviving to, to thriving. thriving. If this is your first time joining us, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, so you won't miss any of these amazing episodes on TMC. And don't forget to share with someone you care about. Today on TMC, we have a special guest, Miss Allison Wellington with Top Tips for Dating. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So my name is Allison. I am a certified dating and relationship coach. I primarily work with women to help them find and maintain the partners and the partnerships that they deserve. I've been married for a little over two years. We just had a little baby two months ago, a little girl. Oh, so congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. So, so I'm living it. I, I know that there's some folks out here in the industry who give lots of advice and may not necessarily be in, in the position to offer that advice, mm, right? Come on now. <laughs> We started with some shade early in the episode, um, <laughs> but yes, I'm, I'm living it. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Glad that you are living it. So tell us a little bit about Align with Allison and tell us exactly what it is that you do with the women that you work with. So I started my coaching business a little over two years ago. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a certified coach, also have a master's degree in counseling. And so I've been in the counseling field for 10 years, but, um, due to my own struggles before I, I met my husband, or actually we met, but before I was with my husband, I was dating someone who either was unwilling or unable to commit. I don't know which one I don't care. All I know is that he couldn't deliver. Right. right. And so once I was able to end that relationship, get back into the dating scene, successfully reunite with my husband, we used to date when we were teenagers. Okay. Um, I said, you know what? Well, if I can figure out how to create the love and the life that I want with my partner, then I am sure that I'll be able to help others. And that's what caused me to launch Align with Allison so I can help other women to get over relationships that did not serve them, as well as to start dating successfully, navigating online and offline dating so that they can find that partner and create that love life that they want for themselves. I think that life is all about relationships, right? Like we're, we're not meant to be as human beings. We're not meant to be hermits. We're not meant to, to be alone. And so if life is about relationships, your friends, your family, your coworkers, your partner, then, and your partner being the one you live with, then yeah. having that solid and having that for that part of your life being so fulfilling is key to overall happiness and overall health. Wow, wow, wow. Allison, you've said something. You said that you work with women to help them to overcome those relationships that did not serve them well. And I love the way you said that. So let's talk about that a little bit from the people that you work with, the different women that you've worked with. What are some of the most common mistakes that you see that we make in dating? There's, there's so many. So <laughs> we'll start with ignoring blatant red flags. And I do want to take a little bit of a time to talk about red flags a bit. There's some obvious ones, right? Like someone who's abusive. I'm not talking about that. Like that's a burning flag is on fire. Mm -hmm. A red flag is when someone is exhibiting a behavior that's not in alignment with what you want. So a red flag for me may not be a red flag for you, might not Come be on. a red flag for her, 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 right? But however, we still see those flags, seeing something that's inappropriate for us. And we still push through and he'll change and I can change him. And only if no, people are not going to change unless they desire to do so within themselves. Absolutely. So one of the biggest mistakes I would say that women make is that they have this belief that they can undo a red flag that they see. And not that a red flag is the end of the world. The person is a terrible human being. They're just not an appropriate match for that woman. But again, thinking that you can undo or you can fix 
And and that's just not the case. That's number one. Wow, Allison, that's that's a good one. And I definitely like the way that you laid it out for us because I think a lot of times we think that red flags are those obvious things. And sometimes we think that red flags are those end all begins all for everybody. And you just said it may not be a thing that's serving what you want or the relation the type of relationship that you desire. And then we try to push past that and like, we're going to make it work. So with yeah. that being one thing, what's one of the other things you would say is a common mistake that you see that we make yeah. in dating? Unrealistic expectations. Mm. Mm. So what I find is that uh, I'll give you an example. I have a client, I uh, had a client, she's in a partnership right now. So we're happy for her. Hopefully it goes to marriage, all that good stuff. Um, she said that she wants a guy who's six feet. So I work with my clients via Zoom when they're sitting in a chair. I don't know what their physique looks like. I don't know about their height or anything. So I said, um, girl, how tall are you? She said, five, two. I said, so why do you need a man who's six feet in your tallest heels that you may wear twice a year, four in <laughs> heels, right? In your tallest heels, you're going to be five, six. You need a man who is six inches taller than that? Like, that's what you need? So wow. there's like unrealistic, impractical yeah. expectations and standards of things that don't matter. Yeah. And that at the end of the day, is not going to give you happiness. So that's what I would say. Number two, like it's women are notorious for being unrealistic in what their dating standards are. Why does he need to be six feet? Now, if you're five ten as a woman, I could understand that you don't want to be towering over your man. I get right. that. I recognize that a tall man usually is representative of feeling protected and safe. So I get like the logic, the, mm -hmm. the like the animalistic. You know, I want a big Absolutely. man. I want a strong, yeah. burly man. I get that. You five two. What you need a man who's six feet for? It's not. It's not practical. I love it. I love it. I, I did love, love it. it. Can you give us another unrealistic expectation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So height is number one, um, and then number two, what I would say is a particular salary. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't say that you should be dating folks who are broke, who mm -hmm. are unemployed, or underemployed, but a particular number, this six figure number that we keep hearing online, right? You got to have six figures. Six figures, six feet, six pack, yeah. whatever. <laughs> uh, why, why is that so key? And I'm going to tell you that, why this logic is so faulty. In New York, somewhere I'm from, someone making six figures, $100,000 is, is honestly doing okay. That same man in Mississippi is cleaning up. Yeah. yeah. Right? Tell the and, truth. Or let's look at it another way. Someone makes the, the $100,000 mark. And they're paying child support. They're paying alimony. They live in a house they can't afford. They have. Yeah. So is it really the number or the figure specifically, or is mm -hmm. it where the person lives and how they live, the, how they live their life, yeah. how they're be able to manage their funds? So uh, another one would be a specific salary. Also, salary changes. Yeah. You could be dating somebody right now who's making $300,000, then he loses his job. The yeah. whole department at the firm gets closed right mm -hmm. they you know everyone's mm -hmm. later so then now you're attracted to him because he was making all this money and now he's drastically not then what again mm -hmm. i'm not saying that you need to lower your standards i'm not saying that you should date someone who's unemployed or underemployed but a particular specific salary is a silly expectation to have yeah. that's good that's good so we've talked about a little bit of the mistakes that we make in dating we've talked about some unrealistic expectations so let's talk about some things that the dating those that are dating the singles can do to be successful in dating what are some things that they can do to be successful in dating mm -hmm. so they need to go out you gotta mm -hmm. go out right <laughs> um and go out physically and go out online right and the reason why that's so key is because what I always tell my clients is unless you're going to marry the Amazon delivery man, which ain't no shame in that. I'm just saying, right. These are the men you're limited to when you're stuck in your house, yeah. the Amazon man, the, the, the electrician who comes every five years. Cause how, mm -hmm. how many times are you like, going to go out? Yeah. Uh, the plumber, uh, the Uber eats delivery guy, unless you are dating those people, those are the only men who are just going to show up at your doorstep. Mm -hmm. Those are the only ones, every yeah. other man, you're going to have to go out to meet. So that's going out physically, going out with a friend, going out with a loved one, socializing, going to events. Yeah. So that's putting yourself out there, right? Like physically going out or going on dating apps, putting yourself out there in on the internet so that you can meet people. But it's, 
impractical to believe that you're going to find the love of your life if you, every Friday, Saturday night, you're in your house, you're watching Netflix, you're eating ice cream, you're playing with your dog. Like, that's just not realistic. You have to put yourself out there physically and online. I recommend both. And then also, when I say putting yourself out there, it doesn't only mean going to the event and standing in the corner in the dark, you know, having a little sip with, and, and talking with your girlfriend. Like, you have to pay attention to your surroundings. Yeah. You have to be approachable. Like, open up your chest. Smile. Make folks feel like it's okay and it's safe to come up to you. Yeah. I think one of the issues that we're facing now, especially with the Me Too movement, is that men are being more careful about the way that they approach women. Mm -hmm. And so you're not going to see the same level of, for lack of a better term, aggressiveness or straightforwardness. Like men are just not be, they're not approaching like they used to because the good guys like, you know, I don't want to overstep. I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. I don't want someone to come back after the fact and say that I made them feel unsafe. So I'm going to just fall back now. We're now we're in a tough cookie, right? Because if women are expecting men to be the ones who are so forthcoming and men are being taught over the last, what, eight, 10 years that we need, that they need to chill. Mm -hmm. Now there's a disconnect. So not only physically going out or going out online, but really making an effort to connect. Now, I'm not saying chase after some man down the street and beg for his attention, but make sure that you're opening up so that I look approachable. Am I smiling or am I on the phone? Do I have a nasty attitude? Like be mindful of your facial expressions and your body language so that that man knows, okay, she's giving me the eye. I feel safe to come over and approach her and I won't make her feel unsafe or uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm definitely I'm definitely glad you said this. I think this can go into why oftentimes we can stay in toxic relationships mm-hmm. because we feel nobody want us, but mm-hmm. we're still upset and still holding everybody else captive and holding everybody else and putting everybody else in guilt because of of your past relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just to build on your point that people do stay in things that aren't appropriate or relationships that don't fit them or toxic relationships because they're afraid to put themselves out there. They're afraid to start over again. Um, They think that being with this person is better than the potential of being alone for the rest of their life. And so people do stay, but I mean, I think that that happens in lots of situations. People stay at jobs that don't serve them, right? Because they're afraid to start over. Oh man, I have to find new staff and a new manager and a new supervisor and what about the the parking? Or I like just make it up a whole bunch of foolish reasons why they don't want to even give themselves a chance to find something better. Yeah. So th- there is definitely like this this deep fear that folks have to start over in lots of things, and relationships are no different from that. Absolutely, absolutely. What would you say to someone who has put themselves out there? Maybe um, they are going places, and you talked a little bit about you know attitude and being open. But what kind of advice would you give to someone if they said, "Allison, I have been out there. I'm online. I'm on this app. I'm on that app. I'm on Facebook, and I've been you know going to the movies, and I go out with my friends, and there's still no viable candidates." What type of advice would you give them? Mm-hmm. So you just said a, a mouthful that's so good. Um, I'm going to work backwards because that's what I remember. So I'm going to start with going out with my friends. Going mm-hmm. out with your friends with an S is a problem. I mm-hmm. need you to go out by yourself if you feel safe and or go out with a friend. Uh-huh. When you have a mob of women in a space and you expect a man to walk over there with a large group, so what? So that he could get rejected in front of everybody? Yeah. Oh. So that... So that there's a there's a girl in the group who says, well, if you're not buying all of us drinks, then you can't talk to my friend. Yeah. So now he got to spend a hundred dollars on drinks so that he could get access to you, and then maybe you might talk to him. Yeah. So they so they can make him a laughing stock. Absolutely not. And this is not an issue of of lack of confidence. It's reality. If there is a version of me, Allison, one end of the bar by myself, another version of me, Allison, number two, with a group of friends, which one is he gonna approach? He's going to take the path of least resistance. So going out with your friends is girl night. It's not the night where you are looking to be approached or to to, to engage with men. It's girls night and that's okay. But do not go out with friends. We're going out with friends thinking that some guy's going to come to you. It's you're making your life hard. Okay. So that was friends. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm working backwards. I think right before friends, you said movies. Every place is not equal. Right. And a movie is going to be it. It's dark and we're supposed to be quiet. So I need, I need a place where we're supposed to socialize. I need yeah. a place where it's appropriate for me to walk over to you or you to walk over to me. I need a place where I'm relatively able to vet the types of people who walk in. So what do I mean by that? I tell my clients 
that I highly recommend that you go to spaces where the focus is male dominated. So that's going to be your sporting event. That's going to be your cigar bar. That's going to be like your business conference. Go to spaces where the topic is usually male dominated and you're going to tend to have more men there than women. That the ratio is on your side. So some spaces like the movies or some other spaces are just blah. Like it just doesn't give you a higher mm. chances of meeting someone who's a good match for you, right? So it was friends, movies, so apps. Um, all apps are not made equal. Depending on where you live, that's going to dictate a lot of which app is a good fit for you. I get the question every single week, Allison, which are the best dating apps? I can't answer that question without knowing so much more information. So number one, where you are, where you live. Why is that? You want an app that's popular in your region mm. because this, this is a numbers game. I can say I live in New York and Hinge is great, but then there's nobody on Hinge in Texas and you're going to tell me in Texas that Hinge is trash mm. because they don't have enough profiles on it, right? Wow. So first, the number one thing, and people think it's some other stuff, the number one thing is a numbers game. You want an app that has plenty of profiles. By plenty, I mean like a million why a million, right? A million, half of those people are going to be female. Yeah. So if you're heterosexual, that means half of those people are already an appropriate match. We're already down to 500,000, right? You know, <laughs> it down already. <laughs> then you're going to have people who may not be the same religion as you. If that's important to you, then they're a goner. If they're not the same race as you and that's key to you or cultural identity, then they're a goner. If they're not in the right age, right? there's so many factors that you are going to automatically eliminate before you even get to the face, before mm. you even get to the personality, mm. then you need, the numbers need to be on your side. So that dating app, number one, it needs to be an app that's popular, period, in mm. where you're, in your region, where you live. Then number two, you need to look at your demographic and the demographic of the people that you want to date. So if I have a client, she's 65. So the number one app for people who are 50 plus is called Our Time. I am not going to send her to Plenty of Fish because mm -hmm. the average person of Plenty of Fish is 28, right? And let me tell you, obviously I'm giving you guys these stats, but this is Googleable, if that's a word. Get on Google and say demographics of those on Match, demographics of those on Hinge. They literally, each website literally has a page that breaks out all the demographics. They're going to tell you it's how many good. men versus women, black, white, Asian, age range, religious affiliation. That's usually like the easiest demographics to break down. So you have to make sure like, who do I want to date? What does he or she look like? What age range like them to be? And does this app have enough people that represent that? It is a numbers game. My last point about the apps, you have to make sure that you are presenting as someone who is desirable. And one of the least desirable characteristics is someone who is negative, or seemingly negative or seemingly jaded. Mm. So if you're, you, Alice, I'm on all these profiles. And if your profile is like, well, if you're an F boy, then don't swipe on me. And if you are here to play games, then I'm not going to swipe on that. So the <laughs> F boys won't, right? Because they're like, hey, she, she's angry. I don't want no parts. But even the good guys, why would they want to be around someone who's jaded seemingly or seemingly angry or seemingly com um confrontational i wouldn't want to so even if i was a good guy who is serious if you're coming across as angry then you seem hurt i don't want no parts of that so you can tell me you're on all the apps but did you choose the right app and how are you presenting on that app that is good you you, you said something you said one thing when you were talking about friends and i thought about this because this can happen as well where you have friends and you have that you know that supposed to be friend right that's in the crew and she's secretly jealous of you because she think you cute, but she don't want, <laughs> you know, so the guy come over there, she's the one that go in and she's the one that's going to yes. block the response and everything else. So I was just thinking about that because we have to be <laughs> careful. Even if it's that one friend, we have yes. to make sure that friend is not secretly jealous of you and always trying to keep you from being in a relationship. So I think that's another thing to, you know, to check as well, even if it's that one friend. And one friend. Make yes, sure. absolutely. Yeah. So I get into that with my paid clients. But I'm going to give you a little tea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I also talk about when you choose that one friend, what the requirements are of that one friend. And absolutely, we talk about someone who's jealous. We don't want anyone who's angry. We don't want anyone who's negative for a couple of reasons. Number one, they're going to come in there with a negative attitude and, and people can pick up on that energy and they're going to say, well, if Angela is looking all nasty in the face and negative and angry. Then Allison, who's right next to her, who's her best friend, must be the same way. I'm yeah. not walking over there. So mm -hmm. it might not be obvious. It might not be like Angela saying, 
oh, don't come over here and don't bother my friend, which women do all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. Mm-hmm. Grab their friends, physically step in between when mm-hmm. a guy is talking to one of their friends all the time, right? Um, but it doesn't even have to be that blatant or obvious. It could be energy. So if Angela, my friend, who I chose to be my road dog for the night, is giving off these negative vibes, then that is going to encompass me too. And then now nobody's coming over, right? Yeah. So you're absolutely right. We talk about negative energy. We talk about the blatant stuff. Um, you have to choose somebody who believes in the in the chance that we could meet someone tonight. So mm. if there's somebody that you're going out with and is like, ain't no good guys out here anyway, so I don't even know why we bothering to go, leave she her. is not a good match. Leave her at home. Yeah. <laughs> leave, leave her where she stands. Find Take her to the else. movies. <laughs> yep. Take her to the movies. Nobody who's drunk mm. or obnoxious or attention seeking because that's the one who's going to be standing on top of the bar. She's going to be the one who's twerking. Uh-huh. And then again, birds of a feather flock together. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if, if Angela is wilding out and making a scene and carrying on and being drunk and obnoxious and embarrassing, then Allison must behave the same way too. Why would Allison be with somebody like that unless she was the same way, right? Uh-huh. If she's drunk, that means I got to watch over Angela. Uh-huh. How am I going to be able to, to have conversations with a gentleman and I have a friend who's drunk? I got to make sure she's safe and she's okay. Uh-huh. So there are standards for who you choose to be your wing woman. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Let's talk a little bit about the partner you deserve. Let's talk a little bit about that. I, I write that a lot. Like, right, I write it in my captions. I write it, um, you know, my eBooks and my trainings. And I think that people read that phrase, the partner you deserve, and they think of it as a positive. And that is exactly not my intention. (laughs) I mean it literally. I will help you to find the partner that you deserve, Mm. whatever that may be. Uh. So however you show up in your relationships, I'm going to help you to find someone who is who is deserving of that and vice versa. We have to constantly be working on ourselves. It is never ending. You will be 90 years old on your deathbed and there's still room for improvement. Right. And so the the. You know, when you're a coach, what they say is you, you put the medicine in the candy. Mm-hmm. So they, they think that, oh, Alice is going to help me find a great man. I'm going to help you find a man that you deserve. So before we get to the dating part, let's talk about how we can work on you becoming the best version of you so you can attract this ideal man that you yeah. believe you deserve, mm. right? You're going out on a dating scene and you're still harping on your ex. You're still angry at your ex-husband. You think that, that men ain't ish. And all this other kind of stuff, but you, but men ain't ish, but you're still trying to get chose. Huh. It can't work like that. You have to resolve mm. those issues for you to be able to really date with a clear heart and a clear yeah. mind. And I was thinking about the six pack because I seen something. I hear this all the time. And I think this is so crazy to me as a man when a woman is looking for someone with a six pack, but they haven't been to the gym in over ten years. Matter of fact, they yeah. don't even like the gym, mm. but they want him to have the six pack and. You know, they, they have one. So, so I'll, I'll explain to you why that is. Even though it's not realistic, I'll explain to you why so many women feel that way and why that logic makes sense to them. Uh-huh. Men and women, right? Heterosexual relationships bring their own um, responsibilities. Okay. And again, a part of the, in our society, a part of the responsibilities of a man is to protect, right? You have to protect, provide whatever. So I don't need as a woman, I don't need to be strong physically. I don't need to have the six pack because the six pack, yes, it's sexy, but it's more symbolic. Just like the height. Uh. What's sexy about the height? It's protection. It's not, there's nothing sexy about height within itself other than it's sim, it symbolizes strength. It symbolizes protection on the low, really a, a, a burly softer man is probably more enjoyable, right? In terms of the cuddling, in terms of the lovemaking than a hard bodied man in reality. But it's the six pack that is symbolic of strength. So Mm. I don't need to have a six pack to match his because that's not what I bring. That's not my responsibility as a woman in a relationship. That's why I don't have to have that quality, right? Mm. I have the qualities that women supposedly or traditionally have. So that's their logic. That's why they can say, I want a man with a six pack, but I don't need to have one because that's mm. not my job. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. It's not fair, but that's that's where it's coming from. Um, you're absolutely right in the sense of, well, how are you going to find this six pack man if you don't go to places that the six pack man is? Absolutely. The six pack man is not in the drive through at McDonald's like you are after work yeah. every day. Yeah. The six pack man is in the gym. The yeah. six pack man is at the juice bar. The six pack yeah. man doesn't go to the cigar bar yeah. because he's concerned about his health and his physique. And so you're going to the wrong places. So again, 
I, I, I get it, but I also understand their perspective is more about symbolism than it is right. about the actual physique. Like, let's say a woman do get a relationship like that. You know, if you don't like the gym, now you got to deal with, you need to lose some weight and you got to, you know, you start hearing things that, you know, make you, make you feel more insecure, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know. I just kind of one of those things just to kind of throw in there because that was the things that happened because if you have a guy that work out and physical, I mean, he want, he want his girl to be like that too. Yep. Even if she's not at that particular time, he's going to pressure her. He's going to pressure us. And that may, yeah. and that may cause problem in the relationship. So just want yes, to Yes, you're absolutely right. Because I think those things to, to the person that does that, those things are important Absolutely. to him. The working out, the, a, you know, the juice bar and all of those yeah, things. That's a core the, value. Yeah, it's a core value yeah. for him. So it will be important. And I think, you know, it's speaking to the fact that sometimes it's an idea that we're attracted to and that we want more or less than qualities and what we want in a relationship. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. wow, wow. That's good. Wow. Okay, Allison. So you are a certified relationship coach give us one other tip or something before we are out of here give us something that you would like to share with the tmc list so my biggest piece of advice both men and women is that if you need help in a particular area of your life i need you to invest in it so what do i mean by that this is like my number one message that i share it doesn't have to be me it doesn't have to be any particular person, but if you know you're struggling in your romantic life, you know you're struggling with your fitness, you know that you're struggling, anything that you're struggling in, I think that there's this fear that people have of investing in someone who can help them to get to their end result. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're concerned, I don't want to spend the money next thing, I don't get the result that I want. I don't know what it is, but I need you to suck it up. Yeah. Other groups are paying the cost to be the boss. Absolutely. They want to lose the weight. They're going to get the fitness coach. Yeah. They um, they want to find love. They've worked on themselves. They're finding a matchmaker. They haven't worked on themselves. They're going to therapy. This mm -hmm. whole shame of therapy that's in the black community, it does. It is in the black community. It doesn't yeah. what exist happens in this house stays there. in this house. Yeah. Right. And airing your dirty laundry. Yeah. We need to invest in ourselves to get to the results that we want. Again, it doesn't have to be aligned with Allison. It can be therapy, it can be counseling, it can be whatever. But I really want our listeners to, to shed the shackles of, well, I can't do it, so it won't get done. No, whatever you want in your life, you can create. You just might have to hire some help in order to get there. There's no shame in that. Do it. Invest in yourself. You deserve it. Allison, that is good. And if this mic wasn't attached right here, I would drop the mic for you. That is really good. <laughs> Really, so really on good. behalf of the TMC listeners, we'd like to thank you for joining us today and for sharing all of these nuggets. So could you tell us if someone was listening today, how could they connect with you? Yes. So my favorite platform is Instagram and I'm at Align with Allison, A-L-I-G-N with Allison. But I'm also on YouTube. I'm also on TikTok, Twitter, every platform. Um, and then my website. So my website is bookallison.com, B-O-O-K, allison.com. And there I have free resources. I have free eBooks, free trainings. But as I just said, you have to invest in yourself. So the, the free trainings and the free eBooks and the free podcasts, the free YouTube is only going to get you so far. And if you still don't have the results that you want, invest in yourself. You can book a 15 minute consultation. And if you think that I'm the right person for you, we can talk about how I can help you through a coaching program. On behalf of the TMC community, we want to thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy schedule and adding value to us all. No, thank you. I appreciate your time and I appreciate your platform. So we hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. And if you're listening on iTunes, rate this podcast and leave a review. That helps us get the word out. So we want to thank you for joining us today on TMC. Looking forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you turn your relationship from surviving to thriving. Bye. See you next week.